Shout out to Gatling Hawk for giving me the idea for this episode. So this episode is all about the radial force component. And why use a radial force component? Well, here's an example. Just one tiny example of what you can do with the awe, wonder, and majesty of the radial force component. Let's get to it. So first thing first, you got to open up whatever blueprint is going to have the radial force, whatever the owning actor is going to be. So in my case, in my example, we're going to do it on third person character. So you just come up here to add and you search for radial force and it's under physics radial force. So with radial force selected here on the left, we're just going to look at our details panel on the right. I'm going to walk you through each of the key settings here. So radius. So this is the range, however far objects are being affected by that radial force. And in my case, I'm going to move this to be a little bit larger for the sake of this demonstration to about 2000. Actually, that's a lot bit larger. And then the fall off, so this is going to determine, okay, is the force exactly the same over that 2000 sphere radius, or does it linearly fall off so that the objects that are further away, not as much force is applied. So object types to effect. So this is important. So you might even consider creating your own object type. Like I have interactable object in tree, and that's what I would do if you just wanted this to affect one particular type of object that's not more universal to your game. And the way you do that is under settings, project settings, and then just search for object up here and you'll get object channels. You could do a new one, but most of the time you're gonna be just fine with physics body in here. And then we have settings for impulse and settings for force. So if you're familiar with physics generally in Unreal Engine, Pulse is good for that one-time effect, like that one-time burst. And then force is more of like a thruster applied over time. Now, depending on how you want to use this, you might want to ignore owning actor or not. So for example, if you've got two spaceships in space and there's like a tether between them or something, or they're affecting each other, or two planets are affecting gravitational pull, then whichever one has the radial force component, actually both would probably have a radial force component, but whichever one has one, then they are going to affect itself in addition to whatever actors come within its orbit. And its orbit would be the radius here. But in my case, I'm gonna pretend my actor is just kind of Magneto drawing everything to him. So we're gonna ignore owning actor. And let's test the impulse first. So I'm gonna set this to something like 3000. And here's the key thing that you need to remember on any actor that's going to be affected by this. So you gotta make sure, first of all, that that actor has one of the types you specify here. So if I go over to, this is just an example that I created, but interactable static mesh. So it's a mesh and on that mesh, make sure object type is one of those types here. And then also make sure that it's physics enabled. So if I go to search for physics, simulate physics, make sure that this is checked. And you can also do that in blueprints this way right here. All right, back to the third person character. So on the event graph, so what I'm gonna do, just for demonstration, I'm gonna do a keyboard B, come down to B. And to do the impulse, all we need to do is we need to get a reference to our radial force. And remember, this is a one-time burst, so fire impulse. And then when I hit B, it's going to fire. Compile and save this. All right, let's test this out. So I have a whole bunch of these interactable static meshes that are gonna spawn in the level. All right, so I'll zoom out. So this is my character. He's got a radial force, but it's not doing anything right now until I hit B. And nothing happens when I hit B. So what's going on? So the key thing there is you got to make sure your force is cranked up enough to actually do something. And at 3000 here, this is not going to be enough because I got to make sure to check this impulse velocity change here. If you notice, if I hover over, it says, if true, the impulse will ignore massive objects and will always result in a fixed velocity change. So that means that this number doesn't have to be nearly as high to affect large objects like rocks and logs and such. Let's try this one more time. All right, here we go. B, boom, there we go. B again, boom. You could set this to some obscene number, but you get the idea. So you don't wanna be uh, too overwhelming in your forces. Otherwise your physical world will not be able to contain your power. So now let's get the ongoing force working. So this is actually already working. It's just this force strength here is very, very low. So what I found is I needed to crank this up to about 2 million to really get the force I was looking for. So if I search for 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And the other thing I recommend here is set the component to not auto activate because then you could turn it on and turn it off at will. And so the way you turn it on and off, let me just show you that. So we can get rid of fire impulse here. Instead, I'm just gonna do a flip flop. Now I wouldn't do this in a real game, but this is the easiest way, I mean, to just demonstrate how to turn it on and off. So we can activate the component and make sure to reset it when we activate. And then the flip flop also deactivates. 
connect this up and away we go compile and save all right i'll zoom out again so you could see the effect and here we go b is going to activate and everything is being pushed away from me because the force is positive that's the thing about a radial force is if it's positive it's being pushed out in that spherical well spherical direction away from wherever that force is originating from but what happens if we change the force to be negative this is pretty cool by the way using the force it's like uh, pinning somebody against the wall and well unless they fly up over the wall so what we can do is we can change our force strength to be a negative number and that will be well a gravity force one last tour of the battlefield okay B and everything gets pulled in and yeah so I'm definitely going to use this at some point it's like rolling uh, <laughs> this reminds me of kind of like uh, an avalanche or a living avalanche yeah something like that uh, I think the performance of this is pretty rough but um, yeah it's definitely something to contemplate and you can imagine almost like a like a dam bursting and the water's just scooping up all the particles all the elements and bringing them into well a wonderful melting pot so i hope you found this useful hope you find uses to the i blanked on the name the radial force component <laughs> i hope you find uses of the radial force component and let me know what you come up with in the comments below